of hate from Mephisto, and this combination Watch executed it. perfectly at the end of the game. From Alarak, make it a quad kill set up by that East Wow, State. did you see that launch pit? Four man launch pit while on a conveyor belt. That was like a regular sushi launch. Nubrak, four at fifty percent. Both cores are just absolutely melting. Which one's gonna go down first? I think this is gonna be respect the gooses. Oh my goodness. Everybody here, that's a four, making five and it does nothing. Not what a play, oh my god, somebody please clip that. Welcome back, everybody, to the Nexus Gaming Series. So we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to knock off a replay cast between Lurk Patrol and Bronze 6. This was a couple of nights ago. Uh, late at night, I think it was 12.15 a.m. as a scheduled match, and I think it even started later than that. I believe that's what I heard. So uh, with this being a replay cast, we won't have all the same information. We won't have the hero bands, for example. Um, I believe that I can pull up the map band. Let me see if that actually does show here. It does. So let me put that in real quick here right now. You guys don't mind waiting just now, right? Um, all right, so it looks like our bands here. Some of these I, I kind of expect based on uh, certain people's preferences. I'm not going to name uh, I won't be able to tell you who did a first pick or anything like that. Maybe the, the teams could since some of them are here. Uh, oh, it was an 11 p.m. game delayed to 12.15. That, that's unfortunate. Uh, <laughs> crud, I just noticed. I got to turn that ticker off. Hold on a second. Ticker was uh, totally spoiling it for us there. Uh, let's see. Let's turn that off real quick. All right. So that should cover us there. All right. So uh, this was the lurk. Patrol map pick towers. That's not what it was. It's tune. Fix that. All right. So lurk patrol pick that. All right. So our map bands we had Altrac Pass and Volskaya Foundry. The selections of lurk patrol. Uh, bronze six banning out cursed hollow and Hanamura. So map number one was uh, Sto Tomb of the Spider Queen. The selection of our blue team lurk patrol. But. Uh, that's it. That's what I got. So we'll go ahead and get into the game. <clears throat> In just a moment. Once it loads. That said, I'm not going to show you guys the load screen because a couple reasons. That way you can't see the time of the game, how long the game's going to be. Um, got to turn off chat in case. You know, sometimes there's some spicy stuff at the beginnings of games. Don't need to show everybody what's going on with that stuff, right? Right? Here we go. Game number one between Lurk Patrol on the left here, Bronze 6 on the right. Let's get our teams introduced. It's going to be Lurk Patrol. Let's start with them on the left. We got uh, Ektar playing the Ana. We got Kael'thas played here by Gunny. Harnock on the Leoric. Uh, FPS Nate going to be playing some May And Ace on the Alarak. And on the right. It's Bronze 6. We got Ferret 102 playing some Lucio. Uh, let's see. Juji on the Blaze. CRT playing that Phoenix. Danny going to be playing that Anubarak. And Kira going to be playing Maiev. That's not going to be confusing at all. Kind of hope that I see Akira in the next game. No, I don't. No, I don't. Never mind. That'd be absolutely terrible. Well, okay, so in chat, you can see uh, heroes that were banned. 
and Anna there getting some scouting out onto the Maya, so making sure that they know what's going on underneath there. And of course, Kira can use that Shadow of Vengeance to come in and disrupt the team a little bit. Although with an Alarak, that does give a, a little bit of, in some ways, a little bit of protection against that. Speaking of that Alarak, nice pull on the CRT Phoenix there. Getting rid of that shield, so in a moment, he'll get around to re regening that here. But we see the pings calling for the kill onto Kael'thas. Kira does get the tether, pulling Kael'thas in with a, a Nubarak Impale. But ultimately, that Blizzard from May is going to be able to get the stun, I think, onto Phoenix. Phoenix using that warp to get away, so no kills out of that. A lot of CCs and disruption there, but nobody ultimately falling. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, pressure mounting against Blaze. Not a big deal. Blaze, Blaze has AoE attack, so he can clean that up pretty easily, gather that soak as our rotations. Put us in a little bit of a split position here. We got Ace coming in, maybe looking to see if they can't get this kill on the Blaze. There's the uh, telekinesis, and Fair 102. Calling it, says, I'm down here to help you out. We noticed that Alaric was missing. Let's make sure you don't die. But there's a big burrow charge in. Ace can use the telekinesis. Somehow manages to not get any of the other people surrounding him in that telekinesis. Not sure how that one works. Darn those AoE abilities and their stuff and things. Kira turning in 13 gems up in the top here. So a little bit more in favor on the gem count for Bronze 6. That said, Ektar and Ace, a pair as old as PB&J. Uh, PB&J being peanut butter and jelly for you Canadians who don't subscribe to such ideas. Like banana and... I don't know, whipped cream or something like that that you people do. <laughs> Sorry, Hector. Didn't mean to imply that you yourself were old. Just, you know, the pairing. Silence going out onto May, so or not May, uh Maya, so she can't uh can't cause too many hassles there for for the Alarak. And is now gonna rotate up into the top lane. Try to gather that safe that safe soak as the bruiser camp picked up on the side of Lurk Patrol. Possibly giving them some room to maybe get some gems turned in here. They don't have enough for the full turn in, but getting close, about 80% of what they would need for that first turn in. And that's exactly what they're doing. 39 out of the 50 turned in, almost all of their gems. 24 so far for Bronze 6, so not too far behind on that. Bronze 6 doesn't have the lane pressure now that Lurk Patrol had, as uh, now Lurk Patrol has just barely enough would require that everybody turn in gems. And let's check on that gem count. Who has those? As we get that rotation, this time on to Blaze, there's no ferret to save. We do get the uh, Gladiator Medallion there trying to maybe survive just for that extra moment, but just at the last moment, the gravity lap's coming in and ferret coming in a little bit too late. Just not quite able to get there. And unfortunately, ferret had to see their friend die right before their eyes. That should give now Lurk Patrol the opportunity, maybe, to get a turn in. Possibly. Possibly. Nubrak did get that stall. Danny diving in for the Alarak, but once again, Telekinesis right on out. Kira in a bit of a dangerous position here, but not... There's no Telekinesis to pull her back in, so... Not too dangerous. Let's level... Oh, let me put that back up. Level 7's here now for Lurk Patrol. Big stun onto the May, but... Or Maiev. My goodness. I'm going to make that mistake a lot. Uh, onto the Maiev. And it's actually going to be our red team. Bronze 6 able to get the first Web Weavers onto the map. And somehow, Kira, I don't know. That was absolutely clutch timing on that Vault of the Wardens to miss the uh, Discord Strike. Because without that, pretty sure Maiev becomes our second kill of this game. But not yet. Great check there by Ferret to uh, boot back. The hero's sitting in that top bush. Down in the bot lane here, it's Blaze versus Leoric. In about one of the most boring matchups I think probably this game has. Uh, but anyways, up in the top here, anti-healing grenade out onto the Anubrak. Anubrak diving back in, looking for that May. May popping her unstoppable. I don't remember the name of that ability, but we'll check it out later. Uh, Maya going in, getting the pull onto the Alarak, and 
such it's it's such a contest of wills between Maev and Alarak here. Maev looking for that pull onto Ace so many times. Kira just hunting and hunting. But every time Ace has been able to get out with the telekinesis, this time gets the telekinesis offensively, along with that Discord strike. And there's another telekinesis onto Maev, and this time, that's it. Living Bomb going out, helping to secure the kill. As ultimately, I guess, the tower, maybe? Maybe a minion shot. I don't know. Credited with the Nexus forces. Ektar says he didn't feel well during this uh, during this matchup, which would explain why he wasn't on the Lucio. Anubarak going with the dive. I'm uncertain the value of Phoenix teleporting there. Oh, because he took the level 7 talent. Didn't yeah, 175% speed for four seconds. So really, Phoenix was looking for that auto attack boost to try to get that kill, but just couldn't quite get there. Once again here, Blaze, oh, what a great jet propulsion. Actually survey, survives because of that. And and I'm not sure if Blaze misses that and just goes straight out. I don't think Blaze lives because I think that uh, Alarak probably could have probably, probably could have pulled him right back in and caused an issue there. Because I think just the silence was on cooldown. I mean, that doesn't surprise me that they first picked Lucio against Ektar. Ball to the Wardens, uh, but May Maev is able to get out of the Blizzard, so no stun there. Danny, however, taking a little bit of that damage from the Web Weaver. Gotta watch out for those waves of shadow there. Dive coming in, FPS Nate getting stunned, but May, as a hero, able to kind of kind of soak up some of that damage and not really be as punished for. Mid lane here, we've got Leoric pushing, so we'll check that out in just a second here. Blizzard coming out, Kira having to move out of that. Dive coming in, looking for the May. Cocoon going out, this time it's onto Ana. So no healing, at least for a few moments. Again, looking for the kill onto the Alarak. Does have the Counter-Strike and a big burst of damage there. Ace getting low, is going to fall. So Maya fi finally finds that kill. But is it enough? They've got three heroes, very low. Phoenix getting, Never mind. Phoenix getting taken out. Anubarak getting sent back with the Avalanche has absolutely no mana. Is going to have to make his way around the Entomb there. Which, by the way, I mentioned I was going to show this. This is what Leoric did while that was all taking place. Getting uh, half of that fort down. So there you go. And here we come with a double Webweaver back to back. Level 13's coming up uh, probably in about... 30 45 seconds so bronze six is gonna have to find a way to defend this to start with on the same talent here but out midway they're gonna find themselves down a talent looks like they're gonna start by focusing in the top lane try to push everything back great sleep dart onto the lucio there i quite literally almost said uh, onto ektar because i just assumed it was ektar playing lucio and once again here we got Alarak hanging out of this bush. And, and the two, again, contest of wills, right? Maya versus Alarak, just nonstop looking for each other in at every single engagement. And so far I think it's uh I think it's equal. As the mid fort is going to fall there. Alarak with the counter strike su completely surrounded. Reverse amp slowing him down. Can he make it out of this one? May, uh, May coming in with a Entomb in behind is going to lock down both Anubarak and Maev. And never mind, the kill counter just went the other direction. Oh, I guess it was in the other direction anyways. Three, three now for Kira and one for Ace. Uh, Ace being the only one to die so far on the side of Lurk Patrol. With that extra kill there, Lurk Patrol going to head on up. They've had two web weavers. They were able to get the mid fort with that and take out the, the bottom wall and get a pretty decent amount of damage onto this fort as well. So top fort very likely to fall here once this boss goes down. But that being said, Ace is pretty low here. But Bronze 6 not coming into this. They do have even talents, but not really interested in heading up to that boss or didn't know that they were there, one or the other. 
That being said, Web Weaver's coming now for Bronze 6, so they are going to have basically a free clear onto this boss. It's still going to take out that fort, but it's not going to get really any significant amount of damage into their keep. Uh, Web Weaver should help them to kind of counter pressure on the boss, but also that means that Lurk Patrol now has to deal with that in the other lanes. That said, they do have a pretty significant minion wave coming in, so they can already get started on the damage in the bottom fort against Bronze 6's active Web Weavers. They can see this. Blaze can set up a really strong jet propulsion stun here onto a an AoE. Set up for that Warden's Cage, possibly. But not quite. Rotation just uh, a little bit too, either too slow or just not possible for them to get there quickly enough as they had to deal with that boss in the top lane. And now Lurk Patrol having to defend the Web Weavers. Mid lane just about done, so they're going to head up to top lane and see if they can't prevent this top Web Weaver from getting any real significant value, evening out this top lane. And they've got, I mean, they've got pretty decent damage for it. It's a little bit kind of bursty with the Kael'thas and and uh, Alarak. You throw out a couple of living bombs and spread that on. That thing's going to go down. All right, level 16 is now here for Lurk Patrol. As they do have enough gems. 80 of the 60 required, so they have plenty of gems. Blaze a little far forward here. Yeah, I was going to say, oh, maybe not. Blaze is uh, just now going to head back, and this is actually a little surprising. I'm, I'm kind of surprised to see that Lurk Patrol didn't take advantage of that. Instead, they're able to, to get their turn in, which is totally fine. Obviously, that gives them more pressure. Uh, and with Bronze 6 here, they're going to be able to... <laughs> they're holding on. They're waiting. They know that they're getting this Web Weaver, so they're going to go ahead and just wait. Send the minions out so that they've got that spell armor in the mid lane to help them counter that. That being said, a big rotation in onto the Maev. Can she make it out of here? And it looks like she can as basically the rest of Lurk Patrol said, you know what, this is maybe not the best place for us to try to get an engage. Leo's in the mid lane and everybody rotating up from Bronze 6 looking for this kill maybe out onto FPS Nate. Danny getting that stun, but just not quite enough. It did hear the Gladiator's Medallion, but I'm not actually sure who used it. So that happened. Combo full going on to the Phoenix there. And at least right now, it looks like we're focusing on the top lane to keep that pressure going. We saw the boss earlier. It did get one of these two keep, wall, or keep towers rather down pretty low. Almost with the telekinesis. Once again, back and forth here between Ace and Kira. And I don't expect that to change. These are really the the playmaker uh, uh, characters on their team. Anubrak, another option. Uh, but really, those are the, the the primary ones. And Tomb could be as well. There's the Kakuna out onto the Kael'thas looking for the stun. There it is. Uh, missing on the stun, though. And Warden's Cage coming out. One of the two? Leoric. He just walks right on out of it. The other? May. She's not really worried about it. She can unstoppable herself. So big set of cooldowns there for bronze six that ultimately netted uh not just no kills but basically no value they didn't even really get a whole lot of damage from it but the overall ult counter is two for two avalanche and counter strike counter strike of course very low cooldown i think avalanche is still a pretty low cooldown as well let's take a look at that 60 no 90 seconds oh that's much longer I knew it got increased, but I didn't think it was increased that much. I think it was originally 50, and then they bumped up to 60, and then went up to 90, maybe. Nate used it. Gotcha. Thanks for the thanks for the call. It's hard to tell. Like certain abilities, you just you just know, right? And normally, a cleanse. If a cleanse goes off, you're like, oh, hey, well, they have a Rhaegar, so of course that was Rhaegar, right? But when everybody has one, it's a little bit harder to tell, and especially if you do have a cleanse on your team or on the enemy team, was that cleanse their cleanse or was it the the cleanse of the healer. Who knows, right? Just kind of depends on the circumstances. Hard to keep track of those cleanses. 89 gems in the hands of Bronze 6. They certainly could find themselves with a turn in here soon. It's 18 to 17. Yuri the Sunwell here giving Kael'thas that additional flame strike burst damage. 
most likely looking for the Entomb with the follow-up. That burn flesh as well, 8% of damage, uh, of health rather. Nice try by Ferret to stall out the Leoric. Does Leoric get away here? He might. He might not. He does not. Harnock. Going to be the first one to fall. Jet Propulsion coming in. They do get the Cocoon out onto Kael'thas. However, that's going to fall very quickly thanks to that Blizzard. And Anubarak looking maybe to catch up to Kael'thas. It's going to be Blaze, however, with that big stun. But just not quite enough to follow it up. So Leoric, the only casualty here, will be up uh, relatively soon, but also can provide free scouting for Lurk Patrol. Yeah, I guess that's true. The... the ding sound or whatever you want to call it is very slightly different. All right, Web Weaver's coming in for Bronze 6. They're not that far behind in XP, so they could catch themselves up here getting to this level 20. And level 20 gives them... What does it give them? Uh, Lucio gets more sound barriers. Anubarak... Gets a, a, an extra stun. We got Phoenix probably going into the uh, extra attack speed, I'm guessing, at level 20 there. And then Blaze, the extra bunker, is kind of what I'm assuming. I And I don't know enough about my absorbs to, to really know. Oh, no. Okay. And then, let's see, what else do we have? So, pro probably the... Uh, I don't remember the name of it. Off the top of my head for Kael'thas, the additional range. I'm assuming. Ana, what? Nano Infusion. May could really go into anything, but I'm going to guess the the death prevention. Alaric has a couple of options too, but I'm guessing Deadly Charge. And then, of course, the Entomb sounds, right? I get a, oh, it's, ha it's... Is that Hasty Bargain? Is that what it is? Last Laugh. Okay, see? Another hero that I don't play enough of to know the names of their talents. But uh, I got the other ones right. But Lucio... <laughs> What? Oh, that's the 16. There we go. I was like, what is this? I don't even remember a level 20 that's that's got that icon for Lucio. All right. Okay. So we got rewind and I think that's burn notice. Uh, so pull on to May. So again, she does have that death prevention at level 20. So even if she potentially would die, she gets that, that extra proc of her trait. Arnok is going to get pulled into the meme beam there, but just not enough damage to to take him out. But Cocoon going out onto the Kael'thas still pretty far back, so probably, probably safe. Going hardcore under the tower here with the Jet Propulsion and the Burrow Charge. And Nate, as well as Harnock, both very low, but everybody on the side of Bronze 6 just getting deleted by the Fury of the Sunwell coming in with that Burn Flesh. 8% Plus double procs, yes, please. But somehow, uh, that's not the that is the unconquered spirit. So, a couple of anti-death uh, abilities, and it is going to be the same thing for uh, for Lucio there, the summer anthem. I I find summer anthem to be very difficult to use um, unless it's something that's obvious, like a pyroblast. Personally. And the like one and a half seconds is just such a short period of time that it's it's great if you can get absolutely everything. Like it probably would have actually been really good if, if the timing was perfect there for that Fury of the Sunwell proc. For the two or three people that died right in that same time, but um but it's it's so difficult to do. The Lurk Patrol once again getting the boss, but Mayev gonna head down into the bot lane. Keep the pressure there. They've got a catapult here, so try to make sure that this catapult gets as much value in the bot lane as possible. With the rest of this uh, minion wave coming in as well, they might actually be able to get this bottom keep all but for free. Yeah, sorry, Lulu. Not everything. Flamethrower, thank you. That, yeah, that's, that's the right one. Yeah, it's right here. I, I could just mouse over it, and then I would know. But I didn't know, the time, know at the time. All right, so boss versus uh, bottom keep already down. We have web weavers coming as well for lurk patrol. This is oftentimes a checkmate level of play, but the boss is here already. It's already at half health, so it might not be. If if the timing was just slightly better on that, 
maybe it works out for that. But we'll have to see here. Galefoss did get stunned. Wraithwalk coming in from Harnock. And again, with that level 13 Ominous Wraith getting the 50% reduction telekinesis onto Danny. So that's down for a few more seconds here. Uh, and now Phoenix going down, zoning for anybody trying to get into the, the graveyard here. Boss and Webweaver are both pretty low, but FPS Nate deep into everybody. Gets pulled back in, does have the unstoppable trait procced. Silence going out onto the Anubarak, though, and there's the meme beam. It's gonna get maybe a kill? Maybe not. Maybe not. Avalanche gonna go out and save the uh, the May there, but Jet Propulsion coming in. Mayev in the back line does have Ektar, did uh, get the tether, but doesn't have that for a little bit as well. Living Bomb forcing Kira to pull back. Harnock does fall. Yeah, I was gonna say, there's no way Harnock gets out of that. And this time Ektar will fall to this. Lucio trying to keep the team moving forward. Maybe to get this kill onto FPS Nate? Nah, she's just gonna go ahead and icing right away. Living Bomb onto Ferret, continuing the chase. And once again, that's a very short cooldown for that trait for May. So she's able to get 40% of her health back, make it a little bit more because of this eight uh, bonus healing. Anytime she, I think it's her level one talent here. No, it's her level 16. 16? Yeah, acclamation. So additional damage, but also healing uh, she receives. So even if it's just her own self-healing, her own trait, that's still a pretty significant boost. They may have been pulled into it. Fair enough. I mean, I generally assume that the telekinesis is off of cooldown, and it's usually because Alarak is, you know, screwing somebody over one way or another. Ana's still down. So it looks like with both teams picking up their bruiser camps. Now... Is Maya in vision? Nah, she's out of vision. So I don't, I'm not sure if they knew that she was up there. Because uh, if they are, if they did know, then like rotating down to, to kill them on the siege camp becomes a possibility. Uh, instead, they clear the bruiser camp in the mid. Which kind of sets us up for a longer game. Because basically both teams are just going to work to clear up their lanes. Because right now, it's, it's two keeps to one. There's catapult pressure in opposite lanes. So they kind of have to, they can't really just let these siege camps or these catapults go. Eventually that leads to significant damage. And as we can see, 59% on the red team's core here. So gotta be really careful. Both teams, a pretty similar amount of gems though. 43 now uh, for Lurk Patrol 45, officially turned in for Bronze 6. And we are at 70 gems required for turn in. We've seen four from both teams. Not not often do you see four to begin with. It's rare that you see four from both teams. And there are still structures up. A lot, I mean, by comparison, a lot of structures, right? Two keeps, alert patrol. Bronze six is, is hanging on. They don't have a lot here, but it's it's something. But they're both looking for that kind of open opportunity. And you can tell, like, Lurk Patrol hasn't seen Bronze 6 for a while, so you can kind of tell that they're expecting something cheeky to happen somewhere here. And I think I think that they probably saw them in the mid lane, so they probably have a pretty good idea that, you know, they're in that middle area. Especially since, not all that long ago, they were doing exactly the same thing. This looks interesting. Are we looking at possibly trying to get... A back door? Is that what's going on here? Boss is up in 10 seconds. Lurk Patrol's here. Bronze 6 is not. Lurk Patrol knows that Bronze 6 is not here. But Lurk Patrol doesn't know where they actually are. We see the danger pings. Check in the bushes. Lucio is going to be in vision, maybe? Yes, there's the vision. And there's the snowball to catch, catch the danger zone. And eventually, I mean, after a certain period of time, it just is what it is. You know that they're somewhere, so you just have to check every bush. It becomes easy to remember to check a bush when you haven't seen anybody for five minutes. That being said, Bronze 6 has turned in all the gems so far. And they're very close to another turn-in. 
So is Lurk Patrol, but they haven't turned any in. Ace looks like he's going to be the first one to get some turned in. But the rest of the team's here. And knowing that, I mean, Blaze saw this. I almost think that uh, Blaze could have said, hey, let's go get that boss. But instead, they might come down here to try to stop this, maybe? They can't. It's already done. Nothing to stop. Is Web Weaver, is the next Web Weaver even enough? I don't know. Depends on who gets it and how pushed up the lanes are, probably. Because at this point, they're pretty well even, right? Mid just got pushed in a little bit, but not by much. Boss play could be, this could be the throw pit. Or it could be the path to victory. I mean, they have pretty good damage potential here. Phoenix with a big haste boost after he warps. Lurk Patrol instead going to head down and get the Web Weaver. They're pretty much instantly going to know that this boss is happening. And the boss is only at half health. It, it's not going down very quickly at all. And uh, Blaze is going to head out, try to stop everybody. Because again, boss is still going. It's still at 20% health. So they're pulling off of it. Anubrak getting the cocoon on to May here. Mean being going out. Harnock getting a lot of damage, but gets pulled out of it. Uh, Nubarak there gets the unkillable, but that is the cooldown down as well. Now, Ace did go down there, so Alarak has his stacks reset. Ferret trying to... Oh, what a great dash there from Ferret. Getting the... I think got a stun. I, I'll have to check that. Um, yeah, did get the stun there. Hira, however, Living Bomb is going to juke the damage from it. Leoric, 50% reduction from Honest uh, Wraith as, uh, he's gonna fall. Lucio somehow managing to keep the team alive through all of that, but blue team did get the turn in and no boss. This boss did not get picked up, so this is 100% in favor of Lurk Patrol. And can Bronze 6 get this, the Web Weavers killed before they take out the core? I don't think they can, because here comes Lurk Patrol in top lane. I think... I don't know why we stopped that. I think they could have just won the game there. Maybe. Maybe. Just... Just May, Kael'thas, and Ana things, but 30%. 30% core. It does have a little bit of a shield, though, so maybe not. Kael'thas is going to break that, and with the Fury of the Sunwell, eventually that's going to work. Bunker coming down, and this is uh, this is now a fight in favor of Bronze 6, but can they finish it before the core goes down? Kael'thas is going to bring it down really low, and it's just barely in time. Gunny about to fall there. But also, you know what? Leoric showing up. Trait value, says Harnock. Ten kills to seven. Overall, a very evenly matched game there. Not until the very end there with that boss play did it, uh, did it really start to turn heavily in favor. Slightly in favor of Lurk Patrol, obviously. They had the, the structures throughout most of that. Um, but overall, that was, a, that was a pretty evenly matched setup and i think uh i think a couple of minor adjustments and bronze six actually wins that game um, but the real challenge there was they could not kill that boss quickly enough if they get that boss then lurk patrol can't can't really push that right they can't push with the uh with the web weavers as not that they did anyways until the very last minute of it um but it means that there's so much else to be taking place maybe that becomes a you know 30 minute game or a 35 minute game because both teams have to defend that i don't know they uh, lurk patrol did still have their top four or keep up so probably still would have been fine all right so let's see gunny says bronze six picked map number two Well, well, let's go see where map number two takes us, shall we? Game number two is going to be on Battlefield of Eternity. I'll show you the maps here real quick while I get the pop-ups for the players set. Interesting, interesting. T 
TBD. Yep. That's how this works. Oops. Some heroes, when you put in the name, they have other heroes that pop up. Like when you type in Urel, it pulls up Tyrael. Type in Uther, it pulls up Butcher? I don't think it matters the order. So anyways, yeah. Uh, Battlefield of Eternity, the selection of Bronze 6, game number two here. We just saw Lurk Patrol successful on game number one. Tomb of the Spider Queen. Pretty long game for a Tomb of the Spider Queen, too. I think that was a total of nine objective turn-ins. Which means that I fully expect there to be like 15 immortals here. Game number two, Battlefield of Eternity between Lurk Patrol and Bronze Six. Let's get this going. On the left, it's Lurk Patrol. We got Harnock playing Artanis. Love that skin, by the way. We got Ace on the Li Ming. Gunny gonna be playing the Hanzo. Uh, Ektar on Lucio and FPS Nate there on the ETC. And on the right, it's Bronze 6 CRT going to be playing the Vala. We got Danny playing the Johanna. For some reason, that looked like Rainer from above. Uh, we got Ferret 102 on Taronda. We got Urel being played by Juji. And then Zeratul going to be played by Kira. So another kind of in-your-face melee assassin there uh, with the blink-in, blink-out kind of opportunities there from Kira. Quite a different f uh, format here for Ace, though. No telekinesis options, no melee assassin right up in your grill with the Alarak. Instead, going into the Li Ming. So we're not going to see quite the same 1v1 scenarios. Uh, the old, you know, check boxes of who, who gets the kills like we would with some other heroes or did in the last game. Uh, up in the top lane, it's Urel versus Artanis. Let's take a look at some of these talents. So we've got uh, Leeming going into Force Armor, so that additional mana regen. Just want to shout out and say thank you for not taking Power Hungry on Battlefield Attorney. Really makes me happy. Dauntless the pick for Urel, so not a big surprise against Artanis in the solo lane. Also, you know, you got that Hanzo. Uh, Hanzo not going into the Redemption, which is pretty much normal uh, for, for most, I think. Instead, going into the Stormbow build. But still, Dauntless pretty high value, especially into that Artanis, which is where she's going to be most of the lane. Most of the game, rather. Rockstar for... Rockstar is the other thing. Uh, block party here for ETC. So he's going to have the additional physical armor. Did I say mana regen? Maybe. It's possible. I say words, and usually approximately 0.3 seconds after I've said them, I don't remember what words I just said. That's generally how this goes. Bot Siege Camp picked up by Bronze 6 here. The Vision. I'm going to scout out that up top, Lurk Patrol's picking up theirs. They do have the 3 versus 1 up in the top lane here, so Ural's going to have to pull back. Play a little bit safe. And with the Immortals coming up here in about 15 seconds, I really, I just looked over to the side there and saw your chat. I really thought that that said it was porn. Um, yeah, it happens. But not on my Twitch chat. Channel? Channel. Probably either. So Vision coming out from Tirana. So she knows that Lurk Patrol is not on this point yet. They are holding on to this. In some ways, they could be aggressive and, and go try to fight over this. Uh, hard to say whether that would end in their favor, though, right? right? They've got Toronto for the stuns, but ETC's got a stun. He's got the knockback, so it's probably not a great idea. Um, both teams do send out their Shaman Camp, though. And pretty even in the XP. No kills so far. Let's actually see exactly who's ahead. So right now, Bronze 6 is just slightly ahead. 
And apparently somebody's calling me in the middle of the night. Seems cool. But right now, race going over to Bronze 6. They get all ready to the halftime while Lurk Patrol clearing up the siege camps, shaman camps, coming in their way. Oh my goodness, I thought that was a swap there onto Urel, but it didn't matter as ETC getting the power slide. First blood, Artanis going to fall. Race coming in now from Lurk Patrol. Artanis there sitting on the Immortal in the back while the rest of them trying to slow down any potential that Taronda and Vala can really provide here. Urel is on the way back. Zeratul, however, chasing the ETC, and we see the danger pings there, saying, hey, I got this guy behind me. Ektar diving in, the stun coming out onto Johanna, knocking her back almost into the immortal stun, but it's actually just Urel who gets caught there, using the Hand of Freedom to try to get out of the danger zone. Once again, Artanis over here, doing the Lord's work, just, just putting a good day's work. Holy cow, that was a ton of damage that went into Bronze 6, just destroyed them. And Gunny with no health, Kira trying to see if they can't maybe find the kill. But it's just not. It's not coming. Quad kill for Lurk Patrol as they do succeed in picking up the first objective of the game. Not only that, score 5-0. to zero. And here it comes. Bot lane. Going to get some pressure here. We got a pretty sizable minion wave as well. With a defense of soon to be four. One tower down so far here. Mortal now going to knock down the wall. So it opens up the opportunity for Lurk Patrol to kind of skate in. We see Ektar doing exactly that up there on that wall. As the Immortal now going to fall. Not a lot, but just enough. <laughs> Me and the Immortal are like this. Fair enough. Knockback coming in from ETC, making sure that nobody from Bronze 6 can get close enough to cause any issues. And really, for the most part, those stuns like are coming out from Bronze, Bronze 6 after 10. They need Johanna to hit the level 10 so that they got the Blessed Shield. They can follow it up with Taronda stuns. Maybe a little bit of Shadow of Vengeance there for CRT. Um, you know... A lot of, lot of layers to go onto that, but it, it kind of starts with the Johanna. Without Johanna hitting those, they're going to have to hit the kind of condemn with the follow-up stun. It's a little bit harder to do that. Up in the top lane, Artanis and Li Ming picking up the siege camp there as well. So splitting the difference right now. Hanzo completing that Stormbow quest at one. Well, there's that stun missing the, uh, what do they call that? Spike. Singularity spike onto the ETC. Ektar going in, looking for Danny. Has the reverse amp. But not quite. Not quite where they needed it on the damage. And a little bit, I mean, Hanzo kind of has little bits of poke, little bits of poke. Leeming has, like, lots of boom, boom, blow your face up. But you kind of need both of them there to follow up on that and get that kill. All right. Alternatively, you can have a rotation up of a couple of heroes that lock down and slow down your uh, solo laner and get Bronze 6 their first kill of the game. Both teams sending their Shaman Camp up as they're now at level 10. Second objective, level 10. First objective wasn't that long. Didn't take that long to get through. Sometimes it can be like level 8, level 9 before you get through it. Both teams going to go ahead and burn through, get to halftime as quickly as they possibly can. And right now, it's slightly in favor of Lurk Patrol. And it's not a big surprise. You got Hanzo, you got Li Ming, and you got Artanis. That's a lot of potential burn damage. He's going to go ahead and walk into Urel, but with her, uh, her righteous hammer there, she's going to smack him in the face. Going to get knocked back into... Uh, never mind, not the Immortal Stone. That's her Immortal. The race, however, allowing for Lurk Patrol to get the objective first. Ektar did get interrupted on the sound barrier there, so that's going to lead to a double kill in favor of uh, Bronze 6 here. FPS Nate now coming through the team saying, hey, just coming through. Don't mind me, a little power slide action. 
What are you going to do about it? Mortal sitting here has about half of its shielding. And you see it does get a power slide there onto Johanna, but... Not necessarily the target I think he was going for. Really just stalling out what Bronze 6 could do for a defense. Now, if he could have gotten that Zeratul, I think that that's a different story. I, I, I think uh, I think Nate was looking for that Zeratul hardcore, and if that stun lands, that Kira probably is a is a quick death. A little bit of a cleanup crew in the bot lane, but also keep in mind this wall is already down, so that can provide a little bit more value for Lurk Patrol there. No catapults by any means, but it means that it's easier to pressure when you force that minion wave up and you get a little bit more hero damage onto the structures. Speaking of structures, Kira looking to get a little bit onto that healing well. Try to equalize what's going on in this bot lane from a healing perspective at least, from that sustain. And uh, pretty much as we've seen most of the game, Siege Camp's gonna get picked up. Opposite lanes from previous though, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong on that. I actually don't remember. But that leaves Urel up in the top to defend against the Siege Camp. And Hanzo. Gonna get in a couple of shots in. Rotation coming down, looking for the flank. Does get a mosh onto the ETC. Almost instantly interrupted there. And Blessed Shield, I think, was used there? Yes, absolutely. But ultimately, with Artanis dropping the blind, it's just a disengage. So... Several longer cooldown ultimates there. We had the uh, Mosh Pit and the Blessed Shield. Blessed Shield's considerably lower on timing, though. Gunny, however, trying to make it away from Urel. Big stun coming in, and the Singularity Spike hits this time. And this time, Zeratul getting that kill. And this is a great time for Bronze 6 to get that kill. They need to get onto the Immortal, because the reality of it is Lurk Patrol still has a pretty significant amount of race. But so far, not getting a lot of damage. Vala finally getting there, has that hungering arrow, and with the uh, the vault reset here, repeating arrow, giving her a huge amount of burst damage onto these immortals. Half time procced, and this time in favor of Bronze Six. And with the immortals going on the aggressive sides here. It just might be that they can burn this down quickly enough. FPS Nate is trying to set up a play as that Encore for the cooldown reduction as well. But it's Urel in the back line. Urel does have Ardent Defender, so using that probably a little bit earlier than maybe necessary, but hard to say because of the stuns. Immortal sitting at a cool 316 health. Should be falling any moment now, and there it goes. Harnock uh, is going to get caught by the stun, but ETC going to get that face melt and add a little bit more cooldown reduction as well. Sound barrier pulling off this time, so no interrupt for that one. But I think this is the first objective that Bronze 6 has picked up now. It is a full health and nearly full shield immortal, but ultimately the team just not healthy enough in a good enough position to provide additional pressure to go with it. So most of the shield gone. Big Rain of Vengeance there onto ETC, but Again, not quite the follow-up that they need in order to be able to get that kill. That said, uh, Ural's just going to die to Li Ming somehow. I think, if, if I had to guess, it looks like maybe Ural was uh, going under the tower. Probably took a bunch of damage there. Blessed Shield coming out. Singularity Spike missing. ETC gets a great slide in, but once again, interrupted there. Almost immediately, so no deaths in the top half of the math, at least. Math? Top half of the map. Kira sitting at half health. Kind of in a dangerous place with that Li Ming, because one potential shot leads to a death there. As uh, Danny working on the the Shaman camp with the team, Zeratul catching that maybe Li Ming is down here, or checking the, the Shaman camp. Or instead is... Uh, of course, yeah. Realized that that fort had absolutely no health. It didn't even have any color on the bar. Like, sometimes there's a little bit of color on the bar. That was 
maybe single digits on that health bar. Shaman camp up on the side of Lurk Patrol. We got both teams sitting at 15 to 15. As, uh... Juiju? Uh, <laughs> Juiji? Is it Juiji? Is that what it's supposed to be? That kind of would make sense. Kind of like a Luigi. But anyways, Yorel, juking the ETC. Juji? All right. Juji. We'll go with it. And Yorel does have Arden Defender, so she can kind of be a little bit more, we'll say, reckless with positioning. Like, when you know that the entire enemy team is right below you, and you're like, whatever, I'm just going to soak this lane. What are they going to do about it? That's pretty much just Arden Defender. Oh, gotcha. Okay, thanks, Ektar. Well, level 16 is here for Bronze 6, so this is where uh, we start to see some big power spike coming out from that Zeratul. Zombie are going to come out from Ektar, keeping everybody nice and safe. Convincing Bronze 6 that this was not their fight that they wanted to take. And that's going to give them now right onto the Immortal. They have the XP talent advantage for at least another few moments. They're trying to get as much value out of that as they can before their Patrol is able to get 16. But there it is. And they're coming in. ETC does get a Mosh. This time onto Johanna. Double stun onto ETC here. And that's it. Arden Defender used. Um, very little da damage going in. But Gunning going to get slammed into the wall. Use that opportunity to go ahead and jump out. Danny, though, is going to be right in the middle of everybody. Lunar Flare is going to miss. But Hanzo is going to fall thanks to Zeratul. Now Zeratul looking for Ace. Using the Gladiator's Medallion. Uh, is going to go back in. Looking for that Li Ming. Let's watch this fight because I think somebody's dying here. Oh, never mind. That's it. Never mind. That could have been a kill onto Li Ming, but Li Ming could have also potentially gotten that kill onto Zeratul. If either of them hit their next ability, it was just done. Uh, big swap onto Yorel. She doesn't have Ardent Defender this time, so she's going to have to use that Hand of Freedom to get away. Knocking Ektar back into the wall, but Li Ming getting that kill. I believe that was a wave of force kill onto uh, Vala, no less. So just the one kill. Lots of chasing, lots of low health bars. But just that one... Uh, make make it two kills. And that should give now uh, Lurk Patrol the opportunity to get this next Immortal. Not a lot of shielding left on their own, so they're being a little bit careful because maybe Zeratul can get that. But we do see here the pings calling out. Kira having to blink away is probably toast, maybe? Yeah, okay. I didn't think there was a whole lot of opportunity there. A little bit of self-healing from that level 13 talent, but that was about the extent of it. And even even a Lucio, even a Lucio will chase you down and reverse amp and all that good stuff. When you've only got 100 health, you're, you're kind of boned. It was close, though. I mean, uh, Kira really did a, a good job trying to get away using that, that uh, blink, and I think might have been to get a little bit farther away, maybe... Uh, blinking over the wall instead of the bush might have might have been enough but it's hard to say because Lucio can just skate around that wall and wants to <laughs> we have an argument in chat over whose kill that was yikes I mean we could probably go back and check the stats and see who uh, did most of the damage I know it, it shows up on the uh, the replays all right, so Lurk Patrol with a eh, basically no shield immortal now. On to the keep wall and first tower already almost completely deleted just in like one round of attacks. Lunar Flare is going to go out. Knockback coming in onto ETC, but ultimately able to skate on out of there. And should be a free clear onto this immortal. It should get a little bit of damage, but... With the Vala, with Zeratul, a lot of pressure from Bronze 6, forcing Lurk Patrol kind of to, to pull back, because they don't really want to take that fight under that keep. 
Lulu, uh, Lulu calling out that uh, Gunny stealing Ektar's kill there. And FPS Nate uh, going, you know, going full Mother Russia over here. These are these are socialism kills, right? Actually, I guess it, that's kind of how. Eh, anyways, Shaman Camp, the call. We see the assist pings. Looks like it's from Lurk Patrol, but uh, Juji's close. Nate coming in with the power slide, and uh, there's I mean there's just not enough of Bronze Six here to to really push hard into that. So there you go. So camps being picked up again, a lot like we saw in game number one, the objectives getting a little bit of incremental value, but not a ton of value. Uh, we're almost to level 20 and battlefield return is a map that can oftentimes end pretty early. And we see already the backs coming in with the vision, knowing that this is coming into the bot lane saying, we don't want to give this keep up. Certainly not for free. And Artanis can get that top camp completely by himself. So no, no big reason to hang out there. But that is a little bit of pressure that'll be going on during this fight. So is it enough? Ural's not exactly known for being able to clear a siege camp quickly. And it looks like both teams are heading specifically for race. Ron 6 very slightly ahead on the uh, race to 20. And Ural does get a little bit of that XP. So it doesn't even bother with the siege camp. Just trying to come in here and get this race down as much as possible. And it is going to be... Ron six very slightly ahead in that uh, in that race. In addition, getting that level twenty. But Lurk Patrol's not far behind, and uh, you know what? Nineteen twenty. Who cares? We got this. They don't want to give up this immortal. A uh, little bit surprised to see Bronze six playing so far back on this. Uh, but it is under the immortal, so. ETC getting stunned there, preventing that Mosh from even being an option. Harnock getting pushed back toward his own Immortal. But it's on the aggressive side, so... Ultimately, Bronze 6 able to pick up the Immortal. Both teams now with level 20. Gives Lurk Patrol uh, the opportunity to defend this a little bit easier now. It's going into the bot lane, so they were just here a few moments ago. But Bronze 6 ultimately pulled back. Looks like we're going to get a bush party. Looking for the kills maybe right behind the Immortal? Or never mind, they're just going to try to burn it down. I think if they had seen that somebody was, you know, a little bit closer, maybe that they were trying to set up and, and try to gank them behind the Immortal. Pull out game too strong. Fair enough. Zero tool sitting off in the bush, but uh, having to juke away from those missiles coming in. Same thing for Juji there. Making sure they don't get flanked behind... Trying to set up for anything that they can possibly do themselves. Mortal already sitting about half health. The keep might not go. No. Okay. That immortal is doing way too much damage. So the keep's, keep's going to go down. Johanna having to use the unstoppable. Artanis with the blind, but Blessed Shield coming out as well. Urel getting knocked back thanks to the face melt, but does use that uh, Seraphim unstoppable thing. A big condemn with the kill onto both Johanna and ETC, but a great death metal here. Going to ultimately lead to a death onto Zeratul. And Urel, but the uh, little bit of core damage from the Immortal there. But it's ultimately still a one for three trade. That death metal getting so much value onto both the Zeratul and the Urel. So a lot of disruption gone when you can't have Urel knocking people back. The damage from Zeratul just stopped because he was, uh, you know, dance party mid lane. He said that, what did I say, Nate? Death metal. oh. Yep. And there goes the keep. So, 18 seconds on Johanna. I was gonna say, I don't think they try to end here. The, the core mechanic of that root is really strong. Oh. <laughs> I mean, technically I just read it. I claim absolutely no credit for that thought. That is 100% you. I will give all of the credit to you on that one. 
But top lane still pretty healthy for Bronze 6, so any Immortal would go down the top lane for either team. Certainly a little bit in favor for Bronze 6. It also is their strong lane as far as Catapults. So in a prolonged, delayed Immortal phase here, technically I think that Bronze 6 slightly evens that out. As long as they don't have like a weird bot lane, strange alternate Catapult pressure issue. So we'll see. But now both of the bot lane uh, camps are up. And I mean, in theory, Lurk Patrol could get both of them and, and pr really provide a lot of pressure here. Uh, they're instead going to just go with the Shaman camp and get onto the race. And again, I mean, they have a ton of race. So fair enough. It looks pretty close to even, though. Oh my goodness. Look at that. 24,886, 24,857. It's hard to be closer than that. So who's going to get it? Let's zoom out and, and kind of see. I guess nobody's going up top. So looking for the defense is Lurk Patrol. They get uh, some poke in here from Bronze 6. Karnak looking for the swap onto, uh, I guess that was Vala over there. ETC did get interrupted. So there's the death. Oh, triple death metal once again with the uh hanzo arrow coming in a little bit maybe a little bit early too uh harnock getting caught by the stun but the immortal is going to get the stun onto johanna juji however going to fall as leeming getting that calamity bonus Johanna getting the kill the counter kill there onto artanis so two for one so far in favor of bronze six and all of lurk patrol really in a, a rough spot for a zero tool here but there's a shaman camp heading oh my goodness the scatter arrow getting the kill onto zero tool so clutch but the immortal going over to bronze six is it enough to allow them to push the top keep is about to fall this immortal goes straight to core but bronze six can't push with it they had to clear the core that's going to give Li Ming and Hanzo the basically free clear. My goodness. Immortal shield almost down. It's heading to the core. But Bron 6 is in the bot lane because they don't have Ural. They don't have Zeratul. If Zeratul had been able to... Like, Zeratul did a great job of stalling out Lurk Patrol. And, and allowing the team to secure the Immortal. They do get the, t the, the top keep as well. So, the net result is that still is a positive for Bronze 6. Unless they die here. Oh my goodness. The full rotation coming in. Johanna's going to see it. Tirana's going to see it. Oh my gosh. Vala almost getting caught by the ETC. Great medallion, but it's not going to matter as Ace diving in. Blessed Shield coming in from Danny, holding everybody into the uh, Starfall. And I think, yeah, ETC did get a Mosh interrupt, a short cooldown interrupt on uh, on that. So it's just the one kill onto the Vala. But that, that means Lurk Patrol's got the, the advantage here. Again, not necessarily feasible for them to just go for core, but if Kira gets caught, that is. Big Lunar Flare. Keep in mind, ETC still has Mosh and has Death Mosh. So given the right time and the right place... Oh, Zeratul, what are you doing, buddy? All right. Zeratul basically saying, let's try to keep them from getting back because we have pressure. That's what Zeratul's doing. But if Zeratul dies in doing this, they lose the game. Artanis is already back, so I think that I think that they pull back and, and let them do that. Now you fight over the Immortal. Bronze 6 won the last Immortal. Uh, and in a 27, 28 minute Immortal going to a core is going to end the game for sure. If, if it's picked up by uh, Bronze 6. If it's picked up by Lurk Patrol, it goes through a fort and a keep. So it, there's still the potential that Bronze 6 could defend that. They've got Vala, they've got Taronda. So, I mean, that's a, a lot of potential burst damage onto the Immortal. Now, let's zoom out. 
The Mortals are on the defensive side, so this is a little bit of a wait. And Zeratul is chasing down the Hanzo. Gunny getting really low. Is going to get the kill, but Zeratul going to fall as well. Is Who wins that? Who gets the, the benefit from that? I don't know. That's a tough call. ETC is going to get the power slide in onto Johanna. She pops her iron skin and Nate getting very low. But once again, with the death metal, this time only onto Yurel. She is going to take a lot of damage. Hazyard and Fender is going to pop it there. So Bronze 6 in control here, especially with that stun onto the Artanis. But Leeming getting some absolutely massive orbs here. Looking for CRT. The ping's called. But Juji taking a ton of damage. The Immortal going to get uh, a little bit of damage out onto the iron skin. But Ace getting the kill onto Yurel is in the back line. But Artanis now falling. Can Danny make it out, though? Uh, Taronda trying to keep the Johanna alive. But now another kill and the resets coming in. Making the difference in this game as a full team wipe coming in. Red team dominated. Red team dominated. But there's a Shaman camp and a couple catapults. The catapults! Oh my goodness, that tower is the MVP of this game. Without that tower, this might... This might be game over all right so um in about 15 minutes this immortal will be done their tool is coming up and he's on the hunt gonna see the Li Ming. oh the singularity spike misses once again, and that's that's unfortunate. That's like the second or third time we've seen Zeratul miss a singularity spike onto specifically onto Li Ming. And probably could have made the difference on the ability for Zeratul to get that kill. Zeratul now looking for Hanzo though. But has Ektar there to keep him nice and healthy. All of the resets coming in. Gunny's still very low. The burst damage from Zeratul there bringing Gunny down to about 10%. The sound barrier just just enough. Followed up by the healing, of course, to keep Gunny alive. But Zeratul's not done. Still looking to get the kill onto Hanzo, but it is enough for Hanzo to turn around, take a shot, and get the kill. And halftime picked up for Lurk Patrol. This is looking scarier and scarier for Bronze 6. As mentioned, a now 30-minute Immortal with just a keep to go through. They have Vala, they have Taronda. A lot of burst potential could come out onto this, but is it enough to, to, to win the defense here? It's going to be very difficult for them to do that if they're also defending from all of the heroes from underneath. And I think Nate, Nate playing really aggressively, possibly looking to see if they can't get another uh, death metal. Of course... Actual Mosh is also available. Minions, once again, taking out the mid tower for random reasons. And now Zeratul's back. This right here is the last fight of the game. Whichever team wins this fight, likely wins the game. Except if Front 6 mostly wins it, they could still lose the game. There's a big stun. The Lunar Flare landing. ETC is going to get a, a big death mosh. Uh, the Immortal actually going to help Johanna out of that. However, uh, deep into the team is trying to get whatever value out of that uh, subdue that she can. Hanzo coming in with the Dragon Arrow is going to get a bunch of damage onto the Urel, but Arden Defender is going to help her to heal right back up. Root going out onto Harnock, trying to get the damage onto the core. The core sitting at 80%. CRT trying to just pummel the damage into Li Ming and Artanis. Both of them will fall, but the Immortal dying at just the last moment there going to carry them to victory. And it turns out if you can get a, a 30 minute Immortal, you can win the game. But I, I really don't feel like that... Uh, that that was 100% Lurk Patrol's game. I don't even feel like that was 100% Lurk Patrol series. That was a very evenly matched series between two teams that could have gone either way in either game. And I think that if uh, if Kira... I, listen, Kira, when, I, when you come back and watch this, please don't take this as like, oh gosh, Kira threw the game, because you didn't. Kira did an absolutely stellar job on Zeratul. Two more Singularity Spikes hit... 
and this game goes the other direction. That was absolutely bonkers. But there were a lot of plays, a lot of different little things. Uh, you know, one of the, the big ones there that ultimately I think led to the victory, being able to catch the uh, Bronze 6 team on that bottom siege camp um, and ultimately get the kill on Tavala. Vala had a great uh, Gladiator's Medallion, which prevented the initial stun from the Dragon Arrow, but just too much damage follow up there to uh, to really do anything about it. So I, I really, yeah, this isn't a double round Robin of, of B West. So, you know, these teams aren't going to meet each other again unless they find themselves in the playoffs. But this would be a really exciting match to watch in the playoffs. So hopefully that uh, does, in fact, take place. And that's it. That's uh, that's all we got. I'm not doing any more anymore tonight. I think there's actually a match in an hour. Did anybody pick that up? I'm not doing it. I'm just wondering. Let's see. Did anybody pick this up? No. Well, you know what? See, like, Ektar could totally pick this up, right? Mm. Well, I mean, you know what? Uh, there's nothing saying that there couldn't be other teams on an equal level as well. Uwu could be, uh, you know, could be right in the running, but this is, uh, this is a, a pretty intense set. I mean, you don't see very many 30 plus minute Battlefield of Eternity games. You don't see many nine objective turn in, uh, Tomb of the Spider games. So, I mean, great set. Uh, Ace, thanks for turning in your channel points to have this cast happen. Really appreciate, uh, you guys being here and supporting the stream just in general you heard there's a need for an interview my voice is actually really struggling <laughs> like halfway through that i was like oh god i have to cough ah, see there's nobody even in an ngs lobby anyway I, how are you gonna how are you gonna do an interview if there's nobody in the lobby? And yeah, Lulu, there's no chance. Like I would get through about five minutes of that game and then I'd be like smoker's cough. So I see that Gunny was like, What? <laughs> I could yep. be in an NGS lobby in about three seconds. I had it up on my other monitor. Easy enough to snipe this from Ace. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> So I'm, I'm not going to ask a whole lot of questions, but uh, obviously this was a set that was very evenly matched. Um, you know, how, how did you guys pull this off? What were some of the things that you guys felt you did, uh, you know, 5% better than the other team to be able to, to make it to the to the wins? Um, honestly, we played our asses off the whole time. Um, that was a big thing. Um, we knew this was going to be one of, if not the toughest match for us this season. So we went into it with a mindset of we need to pull everything we have from the beginning so our strategy was we're going to run a lot of scrims leading up to this match and we're going to try to min max every everything we can every advantage we can get makes sense and even with that made it quite a challenge <laughs> to uh to really keep it uh keep it all together you know until the the very end of those games because there were multiple times where it it could have ended in the exact opposite direction so obviously a I lot think, of practice and timing went into that i think there were like three different times on uh, battlefield of eternity that i thought no oh, this is it we've lost and we managed to pull it off so i was i was impressed i did promise this interview to ace so i will let him take over because i think that's who just joined yes yes this was the fastest setup possible i was gonna say that's that's not what the uh the lobby <laughs> says the Look, lobby is a lie. That. We can change that if needed. L L Lulu's uh, <laughs> voice has gotten rather different. <laughs> so, um, all right. So, perfect. so then since we got Ace here, so tell me about the the one v one matchup in Tomb of the Spider Queen because, I, I mean, obviously you watched oh, it. Gosh. Clearly, I I called it out about a hundred times because that's really I think what game number one was all about. You guys had a lot of stuff going on in general but it felt like the matchup was a battle of contest between you and Kira. So like, was that always the intent 
or was there other stuff going on there? So I spent about, I don't know, two to three hours running through their one VOD and maybe some of their last season practice games, uh, last season games. And Kira, oh my gosh, incredible, incredible player. We'd heard about uh, their Zero Tool play. We heard, I saw from their previous set against Cosmos that they played against, Ma that they played Maiev. And all of those heroes, when played well, and Kira, very strong player, uh, are threats that must be recognized, respected, and dealt with as much as possible. So huge shout outs to Kira first off for playing these heroes so, so, in such a way that we had to base our play style around it, basically. But as a Maiev player, I know what is the most annoying thing on planet Earth to Maiev players, and that's having their combos disrupted. So I spent an unnecessarily large amount of time and effort to deny Maiev as many combos, as many engagements, and the posi positioning that the hero would want and i think it was reflected in the in-game stats where neither bonds of justice nor pin down were finished yeah so. and and ultimately i mean i like i said i i pointed it out a couple times there were there were definitely a lot of uh a lot of opportunities for um for increased kills but telekinesis works discord strike works forcing that vault of the wardens to come out at maybe not the time that they would hope for it and like you said disrupting the combos uh definitely really made it uh i don't want to say easier but more possible for your team to do what they wanted to do in that um with the leoric and getting the combos and obviously you know kalthos just mm -hmm. dumping fire all over everything yeah for sure for sure that uh that mid keep fight was uh a real turning point in the tomb game where they all funneled below the keep and then got pulled into two multi-man flame strikes that just obliterated them so that i think that was a big part of tomb was that moment right there we convinced gunny to not take convection well that was probably <laughs> a good thing ektar don't get used to it ektar there was i mean there was at <laughs> least one time where uh the arcane barrier saved you yeah, it definitely saved more. me. I think twice that game I used yeah. it and it saved me. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, so we then... definitely wouldn't have gotten the core push without Arcane Barrier because I needed it to oh, make 100%. it to core in the first yeah. place. Yeah. And that even that was really close, if I remember correctly. Like, you guys were... Because it was the three of you going on to the core. Uh, I was dead. <laughs> yeah, well, the three of you being <laughs> Lucio... Uh, uh, Anna. Anna and Anna, or, I'm sorry, Kale, yeah, you're right. And right. May, yeah, yeah. yeah. The the Anna, tank, the healer, and Kalthos. Mm, yeah, the little, the yeah. core three, yeah, for sure. So and then it, and then you know without the because the um what call it once again I think the objective died like right before mm -hmm. uh, ultimately the core and it was just that last flame strike that uh, that finished the job. Yeah, nano infusion came in clutch there. Uh, I know Ektar does like a lot of the Anna twenties. Uh, so he does vary that around a good bit, a good bit, but the nano infusion hitting the core to heal for the core's health with the fury of the sunwell taken at level 16, sustained Gunny's health bars that just flickered between zero and a quarter health for the last 30 percent of that core. I mean, it was just down up, down up, down up, and then Ektar popping medallion to make sure that he can continue hitting uh, heal darts is just like dedication to the core cause uh, and that's what you need to end against teams that can just completely wipe you off the floor yep yeah and i mean again with the the combo potential that they had you know between a new and blaze along with Mayev, i mean there was so much set up there that uh mm -hmm. and and it's not like you guys had a ton of core damage potential with with the heroes that you had 30 percent is a mountain to climb when you're talking you know Anna and and uh, May with a occasional spat, smattering of Kael'thas damage. Mm -hmm. so. And then you get to, to Battlefield of Eternity, which uh, the duration of this game was 3211. That includes your, you know, early, yeah. you know, 30 seconds or whatever for the, the mm -hmm. setup time. So uh, one of the longer, if not the longest BOE games that I've ever seen, I think 
I think Regen Blue had one that was about this length of time as well back in Season 7. Um, like, this is a long game on a map that usually is not this long. How does that wear on you guys as you're going on? And especially, and, and Gunny, you're going to have to answer this at least partially, especially when Zer Zeratul is just riding your ass. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. <laughs> so so I'll, I'll pick the first half of this. Um, I think both teams were not fully set up to go into this match, as I think we mentioned at the start. This was a 11 p.m. East. This is a West Coast game, but still we have teams that range between all the way from West to Central, and even some players are still in East. This started was set to start at 10 p.m. Central, my time zone, and it started at 11.15 due to some, uh, and just uh, Bronze 6 needing to get their fifth player in. And just judging by how we were planning to go through this, uh, this thing, we expect both teams to make playoffs. So this matchup, it, it matters, but in the long run, it doesn't really matter as we expect to see them again, or would hope to see them again uh, sometime down the line. So we didn't mind pushing it back, but nonetheless, it made for an even longer night going into it. Uh, and oddly enough, we just played a 28 minute Battlefield of Eternity clown fiesta of a game. <laughs> you want to talk while about how we long you played in that game, Nick? Because that was pretty funny. We had 37 deaths, and nine of them were mine, and I threw hard. So we were warmed up. Uh, but between an over an hour of delay, a 30 minute game that required the utmost precision to make sure we didn't die at any bush ganks that we knew they did, or just stay disciplined enough to you know, execute our game plan was extremely difficult. And then to go into another game that was that ultimately ended up being 30 minutes long was very, very taxing and may have been motivational because we did not want to go to a game number three. So I don't think we had a game number three in the tank with how much we no. put into those first two. Yeah. So, yeah. And passing it to Gunny, he did an incredible job uh, most of this game dealing with a zero tool that can literally 100 to zero him in six abilities, as one of the death recaps showed. Yeah, I had heard Zeratul could do that, and I hadn't quite witnessed it firsthand until then. Not a fan. <laughs> I'm gonna say that. His Zeratul play was crazy. Like, that was just insane. Yeah, and, and but, you know, I called out, like, one or two of the um, Singularity Spike misses. I, I think a lot of that, because you can tell that Kira is extremely comfortable on the hero. Um <laughs> And I think a lot of that, what you just described, this is practically 2 a.m. I don't know yeah. what time zone, even if it's 11. I don't generally play, you know, ranked games or NGS games at 11 p.m. So I can only imagine, you know, even if it was earlier for Kira than than other people, it's still a late match. And yeah. it becomes, you know, much more difficult to make those very precise shots uh, mm -hmm. when you start to get a little bit tired like that. Um, but yeah, I mean... It, there's no doubt in my mind that if Ektar doesn't get that sound barrier off at the exact moment, or if that singularity spike lands onto Ace, this game goes 100% the other direction. I mean, we, we went into a couple of uh, replays, and we found that like one more auto attack landing on me would have killed me on that last demo fight. And because I positioned in the right way to walk in a certain direction, that's the only reason that that auto attack didn't hit. Yeah. And it was it was just a crazy close call with how much damage that hero could put out. And he would miss one singularity spike, but he'd still take the shot no matter what. And that's the sign of a really good player. For sure. So. All right. Uh, I'm tired. So uh, any shout outs you guys want to do? Uh, we're going to do the Lurk Patrol standard shout out uh, to all the people on the team, especially Hydef, who's unable to play for this set as it... A was late, and B, the uh, hero pools lined up in such a way that uh, Harnock was needed for uh, the Battlefield of Eternity. So shout out to that. Uh, again, shout out to Bronze 6. Incredibly strong team. Uh, we'll, we'll see you again. Uh, that's that's kind of what I'm... That's my expectation. 
and you know we'll do everything in our power to get as far uh, through the season and into the playoffs if that so becomes the case to uh, to meet you again. So good luck to Bron Six. Great set. Uh, I know it didn't turn out in your favor, but that was an absolute hell of a series. Gunny, you got any more? No, you got it. <laughs> All righty. Awesome, guys. And you for uh, picking up this cast. We appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I like the arrow cast. We all like the arrow cast here at uh, at Lurk Patrol. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right on. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, always a pleasure to get a cast in for you guys. And, uh, uh, you know, I certainly wasn't going to be able to cast that live at, at 12.15, uh, but uh, glad that we were able to get it here. This is a great set. So mm -hmm. have a good night, sure, guys. For sure. Good night. Good and night. Uh, if you haven't already done so, which I know you did because it was on a ticker earlier, make sure you were playing a match, but never mind. We played already. our flex match on the first day of regulation play, Arrow. Nice. We <laughs> were second day, I think. I think we did ours on Tuesday. Nice. So, nice. Yeah, we're, we're right there. Hold on. Yeah. Born to shine with the great praises. Yeah, we. Uh, I I went and reached out to um, our our match for next week. He he was he was like, uh, well, I had reached out to him on week one, and he said, hey, I'll know better the week before." So no joke, like Monday morning, eight o'clock in the morning, I sent him a message. I was like, "All right, you were good to go." And he's like, "You are on the ball." I'm like, well, I got stuff to do. Let's put this on the calendar. <laughs> I've been chasing captains all season. <laughs> I'm yep. probably getting so many people annoyed with me. Yep, that's how it goes. Match is scheduled. Yep. All right. GGs. Have a good night, guys. Thank yeah, Thanks for the cast, night. Arrow. Yep. All right, that's going to be it. Thanks, everybody, for joining me for this replay cast of Lurk Patrol versus Bronze 6, a 2-0 victory in favor of Lurk Patrol. Uh, really fantastic set to cast. Uh, a, a long one. I mean, that could have been a, a three-game series, in fact, uh, with how long those games were. But uh, only two. Only two. But these these teams are really close and and you know bronze kick bronze six looks really scary going into uh going into the latter part of the season so we'll see how this turns out anyways everybody have a great night thanks for joining us and uh we'll catch you again soon